All right, so I broke the hay rake last time I took it out, unfortunately. So what happened is I was turning into a field and this thing is fairly wide. It's like 11, 12 feet across, something like that. And so the sides stick out a little bit and I clipped a fence post with one of the sides of this thing. I think it was this side actually. And I knew it was gonna happen. It happened at a snail's pace and I was looking at this and I said, well, obviously this whole basket, you know, this yellow part, it swings back and forth like that. So, you know, it should just kind of glide across the side, you know, get pushed off the, the angle there, but it didn't. Basically, as soon as this contacted the fence post, stuff broke and the basket's laying on the ground, at which point I had to ratchet strap this back together so that I could complete that one field. We'll see if this wants to come apart. This is what's really nice about these German oh, pliers wrenches, is that you don't actually have to take an entire set of wrenches out. You're working on something like this. Oh, oh it hasn't moved in, I don't know, since the 1960s probably. So oh, it's gonna be a battle. Poor little dog just tried to catch a rabbit and it got away from him. We call him lucky because we adopted him off the street, but really he's luckier that he doesn't have to catch his own food. Or well, smart, I would have brought some oil to put on these threads. Hey, this isn't that bad so far. <laughs> Stupid goats have too much grass to eat, so they haven't been keeping the equipment clean. So I got to looking at this and I figured out these pins are probably pressed in place and so I tried to come up with a good way to unpressify them. I tried to get this set up in my actual shop press but I, I couldn't really channel the energy that well directly into where it needed to go and I was really afraid of launching this uh, little socket extension I'm using here and having it become a projectile and like shoot through both sides of me and go out the building. So I decided that was a bad idea. I tried uh, something very similar but on a smaller scale with my bench vise and when that failed I realized that I could sit around and mess with this all day or that sometimes when you need to do things the hard way really that's the easy way and so I just started drilling out these pins and got this apart. Now I will say I'm not really sure why New Holland felt the need to come up with this whole pin system when really just like you know a bolt or something would have been fine but whatever I'm sure they have the reasons and to their credit it has lasted very 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 well. Um, mm, that's kind of thin. I might have to weld some junk to some other junk to make this happen. This should be fine. Nice. It works.
So this is a success. I got both of these sides on here. They work properly, they seem to fit properly. Both sides adjust up and down in the way that they should. Definitely looks a little bit mismatched from the pieces on the bottom, but it works. It cost me like a 200th of, <laughs> of the, uh, the actual proper New Holland ones. I don't know, it didn't really cost much. Obviously it did cost something, everything costs something. I've spent, I don't know, including waiting for those to cool down for a little while, probably an hour and a half or two hours on this. It cost me a drill bit, that one piece of steel, and like two welding rods. Not that big of a deal. Look, I even managed to reuse the hardware that came on the rake. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. This is the kind of thing, sometimes people ask, you know, how can you, how can you afford all these big expensive machines like the lathe and everything? How can you really afford not to work on your own stuff, honestly? These parts, like, obviously this is weeks after I used this thing because it broke on the last night of second cutting, but if this was really an emergency repair, I could have limped this thing home with the ratchet strap, gotten back here, fabric cobbled this together, and gone right back out to the field that night. It would have saved me time, potentially would have saved my hay from getting rained on, if it was raining at that point in time. And, um... Yeah, and honestly, this kind of thing doesn't even really require much in the way of specialty tools. Yes, it's nice to have the uh, the lathe and the Fronius in there, but I could have I could have made these with uh, with like a little handheld electric drill from Harbor Freight, like a $200 Chinese inverter welder, if that's all I had. So I'm fairly optimistic this is going to work out. I do worry a little bit, however, because it crossed my mind earlier that maybe these are meant to break so that these little pieces break before anything actually expensive or critical on the rake goes. Uh, so I am a little concerned that the first time I take this out, you know, there's going to be this, like some hairline fractures on these parts, and so the first time this thing hits a bumper, crashes through a ditch, it's going to break. But, uh, you know, I guess there's just one way to find out, and if that happens, I'll have to find another piece of that steel laying around somewhere. So whatever, just a random little project. Uh, I'm glad this thing is back to being operational. I really like how this turned out. Project went really well. I'm, I'm happy to say, but honestly, this kind of thing isn't exactly rocket surgery. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more. I hope you enjoyed following this repair.